Have you ever found a thread of Irish ancestry through DNA testing? If so, have you ever wondered whether your ancestors' Y and mitochondrial DNA still persist in your genome? The story of ancient Ireland is far richer and more complex than a single ancestral label, with its roots stretching back into the distant past and shaped by the movements of diverse peoples across millennia. From the rugged shores to the fertile valleys, the first inhabitants arrived as Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, carving out a life amidst rolling woodlands. Then, about 3,750 BC, Neolithic farmers brought change, introducing livestock, crops, and ancient burial monuments that still stand sentinel today, like echoes of their lives. And finally, the Bronze Age settlers arrived, bringing metallurgy, tools, and a wave of cultural transformation that would forever shape the land and its people. Your DNA could hold fragments of all these extraordinary stories waiting to be discovered. We begin with the Neolithic woman from Balanahati, dated to approximately 3176 BC. She shines as a pivotal figure in understanding Ireland's genetic and cultural transitions. Her genome, meticulously sequenced at high coverage, offers a detailed snapshot of genetic patterns during the early agricultural expansions into Europe. Belonging to mitochondrial DNA haplogroup HV0T195C, a distinct variant of HV0, she shares lineages with early and middle Neolithic populations across Europe, particularly from Germany and France. This haplogroup is a genetic hallmark of Neolithic farmers who descended from fertile crescent agriculturists, embedding their legacy across continents. Its presence in Balanahati emphasizes Ireland's integration into broader Neolithic migration routes. While Y-chromosome data is unavailable for this female individual, the wider genetic landscape of Neolithic Ireland offers critical context. Male samples from similar periods, particularly from passage tombs, predominantly reflect haplogroup I2A, a lineage with roots in European Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. This continuity, observed alongside mtDNA haplogroups such as U5, K1, and T2, evidences a complex interplay between incoming farmers and local populations. Although farmers predominantly carried Near Eastern haplogroups like G2A or HV0, the genetic signatures of indigenous groups persisted, creating a unique admixture. Balanahati's genome demonstrates this blend vividly, revealing approximately 42% Western hunter-gatherer ancestry, despite predominant Near Eastern farmer origins. Admixture wasn't uniform, reflecting localized integration. Balanahati's genetic clustering with Middle Neolithic individuals from Spain, Germany, and Scandinavia underscores broad regional connections fostered during the agricultural spread. Notably, her genome shared affinities with Mediterranean farming populations, such as Sardinians, suggesting a southern coastal migration route into Ireland, rather than a central European pathway. Her mtDNA and broader genome thus personify the melding of continental Neolithic streams on Ireland's edge. Her association with megalithic architecture represents a crucial archaeological genetic nexus in Neolithic Ireland. Discovered within a megalithic context, dating to approximately 3176 BC, she exemplifies the population that constructed Ireland's 1,200 plus megalithic tombs, including the spectacular Newgrange Passage tomb, with its 200,000 ton construction weight. These monuments form part of a broader Atlantic megalithic tradition, spanning 6,000 or more sites across Western Europe, from Portugal's Alentejo to Brittany's Karnak alignments and the Orkney complexes. Radiocarbon dating confirms a west-to-east chronological pattern, challenging earlier diffusionist models. The megalith builders shared not only architectural techniques but genetic signatures. Studies of 24 individuals from Iberian and 14 from British megalithic contexts revealed predominant Anatolian farmer ancestry with haplogroup distribution patterns matching Balanahati's profile. The parallel spread of distinctive Karakil pottery across these regions further evidences a coherent cultural genetic community. These monumental structures required organized labor forces of 300 to 400 individuals, for larger examples indicating the social complexity and sedentary lifestyles that Balanahati's agricultural genetic heritage made possible. The Balanahati woman carried the mitochondrial haplogroup HV0195, an early branch of a lineage that predates the more common haplogroups H and V. This rare maternal lineage still exists today, albeit in low frequencies across parts of Ireland, the Basque Country, and other areas of Western Europe. While exact matches are incredibly rare, 
Individuals carrying HV0 or nearby subclades may share a maternal connection to this Neolithic woman who lived near Belfast over 5,000 years ago. Another fascinating find was the remains of three Bronze Age males on Rathlin Island. Dating back to 2026 to 1534 BC, their DNA preserves a vivid record of a genetic transformation that would define this region for centuries. These individuals were not only carriers of new cultural and technological innovations, but their genetic signatures also marked a significant shift in Ireland's population lineages. All three males belonged to the Y-DNA haplogroup, RL21, the dominant paternal lineage in Ireland. The presence of this haplogroup signifies the spread of the Bronze Age cultures associated with steppe migrations. R1b, which was almost non-existent in earlier Neolithic populations, rapidly replaced the male lineages of earlier settlers, like the Neolithic farmers. This dominance is thought to have been driven by a mixture of migration, cultural assimilation, and possibly social disruption that favoured the predominance of steppe lineages. The frequency increases along an east-to-west gradient, peaking in regions such as Wales and the Basque Country. Its prevalence in these areas suggests that it played a key role in post-glacial expansions and subsequent population movements. Certain branches of the R1BM269 lineage, like those found in Northern Europe and along the Atlantic coast, have distinct patterns of distribution. These patterns reflect historical movements of people and how populations have developed over time. The mitochondrial DNA of these Rathlin males provided further clues about their ancestry. The mtDNA haplogroups discovered included lineages such as H and U, well documented in early European populations. Haplogroup H, especially, is often linked to the migration of Neolithic farmers, while U derives from Paleolithic hunter-gatherers. As mentioned earlier, a standout feature of their genomes is the strong presence of steppe ancestry, a hallmark of genetic input from the Yamnaya herders of the Pontic Caspian steppe, situated between Eastern Europe and Central Asia. The Yamnaya are widely credited with ushering in the Bronze Age across Europe, transforming societies through the introduction of horse domestication, wheeled vehicles, and advanced metalworking techniques. Their movement into Western Europe around 3000 BC sparked cultural revolutions, bringing hierarchical social structures and dynamic migration waves. For Ireland, steppe ancestry introduced new genes that reshaped the genetic makeup of its population. These include variants related to lighter pigmentation, such as fair skin and eye color. This infusion also coincided with a rise in genes associated with improved immunity and increased efficiency in metabolizing dairy, reflecting the enduring influence of livestock herding and dairying introduced during this period. Adding another dimension to the Rathlin male's genetic story is the trace of Caucasus admixture in their DNA. This genetic marker reveals links to populations near the Caucasus Mountains where Yamnaya herders likely interbred with groups from the early Bronze Age. For those exploring their Irish ancestry, these findings offer a compelling link to a time when Ireland transitioned into a new era of metalworking, monumental construction, and societal evolution. The discovery of the C282Y mutation in one of the Bronze Age males from Rathlin Island has provided a fascinating link between ancient and modern Irish populations. This genetic mutation, associated with hereditary hemochromatosis, a condition causing excessive iron absorption in the body, has one of the highest frequencies globally in present-day Irish people. Its prevalence highlights an intriguing case of genetic continuity that spans over 4,000 years. The C282Y mutation affects the HFE gene, which is integral to regulating the body's iron metabolism. Individuals carrying two copies of this mutation are prone to iron overload, a condition that, left untreated, can damage organs like the liver and heart. However, in ancient times, when iron deficiency was more common due to limited diets, this mutation may have provided a survival advantage. Carriers of the mutation might have been better equipped to absorb and retain essential iron, especially in regions like Ireland, where agricultural diets could fluctuate in nutritional reliability. Rathlin served as a natural staging post for those travelling between Ireland and Scotland, enabling the flow of people, ideas and goods. The DNA findings reflect the early precursors to this connectivity, demonstrating how the island functioned as a bridge between cultures long before the Gaelicisation of Western Scotland. In 2019, researchers studying the remains, found within the tombs of the Boyne Valley, uncovered a skeleton that would turn out to be far more than just another Neolithic burial. This individual, now referred to as the Newgrange elite male, 
presented a genetic profile that offered profound insights into early Irish society, its structure, and even its echoes in the modern Irish gene pool. The genome of the Newgrange male stood out for a startling reason it bore clear signs of inbreeding at the level of a first-degree relationship, something extraordinarily rare in human history. The data strongly suggested that his parents were either full siblings or parent and child. While shocking by modern standards, this kind of genetic relationship implies a dynastic elite, a ruling class that sought to preserve its lineage through carefully controlled and insular marriages. This kind of reproductive isolation isn't common in prehistoric societies unless social stratification is deeply entrenched. It's something we've observed in ancient royal families of Egypt or the Inca Empire, where the elite believed themselves to be divine or semi-divine and therefore above common union. The presence of such a practice in Neolithic Ireland reveals that a similar elite ideology existed here, perhaps thousands of years before it was known elsewhere. His burial within Newgrange, a monument requiring the coordinated effort of hundreds of labourers, and community planning signifies his status. The fact that his genome shows inbreeding suggests that his family may have been at the top of a powerful religious or political hierarchy, possibly ruling over a large region of Neolithic Ireland. To understand the significance of the Newgrange elite male, one must consider what Newgrange represented to the people of its time. As mentioned earlier, constructed around 3200 BC, centuries before the Egyptian pyramids, this tomb wasn't just a burial chamber, it was a sacred calendar, a communal temple, and possibly a dynastic crypt. Each winter solstice, sunlight enters the narrow passage and illuminates the inner chamber for precisely 17 minutes. This level of astronomical precision wasn't accidental. It hints at priestly knowledge, planning, and social cohesion. The burial of the inbred male in such a spiritually potent site might suggest he belonged to a priest-king class that controlled both the spiritual and material realms. His genetic profile suggests he was not alone. Other individuals buried at nearby sites like Douth and Noth, while not as closely inbred, also carried genetic signatures suggestive of relatedness. This paints a picture of a regional elite ruling across a network of megalithic centres, perhaps for generations. Moving on to the Bell Beaker culture, which emerged around 2800 BC, it is a pivotal archaeological phenomenon that spread across Western Europe, including Ireland, from approximately 2400 to 1800 BC. This culture is characterised by its distinctive inverted bell-shaped pottery and is associated with significant genetic changes in the regions it influenced. The Beaker culture's expansion into Ireland is particularly noteworthy, as it introduced new burial practices, technological innovations, and genetic influences that blended with the existing Neolithic populations. In Ireland, the Beaker culture's arrival marked a shift from collective burials in large passage tombs to single graves, often accompanied by Beaker pottery and other artefacts like copper daggers and arrowheads. This change reflects a transformation in social organisation, moving towards family-based units, the Beaker people in Ireland also adopted cremation, a practice that was common among the earlier Neolithic inhabitants. However, unlike other regions, the Irish Beaker culture did not fully adopt all the typical Beaker customs, instead integrating some elements with local traditions. Genetically, the Beaker culture's impact on Ireland was profound. The Beaker-associated males were predominantly carriers of the R1BM269Y chromosome lineage, which is a hallmark of steppe ancestry. As mentioned earlier, this lineage became widespread in Western Europe during the late Neolithic and early Bronze Age, replacing earlier Neolithic Y-chromosome haplogroups, such as I2 and G2. In Ireland, R1, BM2, 6, 9 is particularly prevalent, with frequencies reaching up to 83%, making it one of the most common Y-chromosome haplogroups in the region. The genetic legacy of the Beaker culture in Ireland is evident in the modern Irish population. Many Irish R1B lineages, particularly those not closely related to the Rathlin cluster, may trace their ancestry back to this secondary influx of Beaker individuals. In addition to genetic changes, the Beaker culture introduced significant technological innovations to Ireland. The discovery of copper mines at Ross Island, dating back to around 2500 BC, is a notable example. These mines were a major source of copper not only for Ireland but also for England with chemical signatures of Ross Island copper found in artefacts across these regions. This technological advancement underscores the Beaker culture's role in establishing new trade networks and economic systems. So if you've tested your own DNA, and your Y-DNA haplogroup is R1B, particularly subgroups like RL21 or RDF21, 
then you likely descend from the Bronze Age newcomers, who arrived in Ireland around 2500 to 2000 BC, men like the Rathlin warriors. On the other hand, if your Y DNA falls under haplogroup I, especially rare branches like IM284, you might belong to one of the few surviving male lines from Ireland's original hunter-gatherers or early farmers. These lineages are much rarer today, but they represent the earliest layers of Ireland's genetic history. For women, if your mtDNA belongs to groups such as U5, H1, K1, or T2, it's possible that your maternal line goes all the way back to the Neolithic women who farmed the land thousands of years ago. These maternal lineages were more stable and widespread, and many are still present in the Irish population today. Participating in a DNA test isn't just about discovering ancient connections. It's also a window into personal history. By understanding your genes, you can trace the migrations of your paternal or maternal ancestors over millennia.